So you go up to a gasoline station, and now you know don't buy diesel fuel unless you have a diesel engine. It doesn't work. But what about all of those other choices? What about when you come up to a pump and you see something like this? My, do I need octane 87, 88, 89, 90, 91? I've seen octane 93. What does this rating mean? This is what a pump might look like in the US. In other countries, they'll have different numbers. The numbering scheme is a bit different, but generally the concept is the same. So let me explain what these numbers mean. This is in with the same discussion about diesel engines for exactly the same reason. You don't want that fuel to spontaneously combust because the air has gotten heated through the compression cycle. Remember, in a gasoline engine, the gasoline and air mixture is compressed at the same time. You want the spark to ignite the fuel. If it ignites earlier, that's a knock. So, if you have an engine with a high compression ratio, a gasoline engine with a high compression ratio, like my Trans Am, that type of car has to have a fuel that will not spontaneous combust, will not knock. It needs a higher octane rating. But if your engine isn't designed to have a high compression ratio, in other words, if your engine is not designed to be high performance, it's not in a sports car, it's in your Joe Average minivan, then getting the lowest octane fuel is just fine. The, you won't get any added benefit by buying the higher octane grade. You see, octane rating has to do with this chemical. This is called iso-octane. And it's a particular chain of eight hydrocarbons, very cross-linked. You can still see it's octane. You got eight hydrocarbons. It doesn't form some loop. It's not an aromatic. But this iso-octane is the most stable octane isomer. It's the most stable way to put the eight carbons together. This fuel has an octane rating of 100. Pure iso-octane is very difficult to actually get to knock. You can take a very high compression ratio with pure iso-octane and therefore you can get a lot of power out of it. It isn't that if you buy 100 octane fuel you're guaranteed to have all of this particular type of octane, but it will have the equivalent performance to it. So if I have a lower octane rating, say 87 or 91 or any one of the other numbers that were up there on the pump, that means it has the ability to be compressed of maybe 91% of this and something else for the rest, heptane for instance. This way you can look at the number on the pump and decide what you need for your type of vehicle. Clearly, the higher octane ratings, since they take more processing in the refinery to create them will also end up costing more money. So even though this is the lab definition, sometimes there's also definitions in terms of doing road tests on the fuels. And many times you'll see something on a pump that will say R plus M over 2 which basically are two different ways to determine the octane rating and they average them together to make sure to give you this particular mix that you can guarantee will not have your engine knock, that will not spontaneously combust as you compress it, which is very important for the longevity and the ability for your engine to produce power. You might notice also on gasoline pumps that most gasoline in the U.S. is gas -a -hall. This is really E10, meaning it's 10% ethanol. It turns out that if you add ethanol to a fuel, it will boost its octane rating. It's not octane, 
but since the principle of the octane reading is how much can we compress it without it spontaneously combusting, adding ethanol to your fuel helps with that. And that means you can use a cheaper grade of gasoline, all right, one that isn't quite as stable, mix it with alcohol, maybe even just 10%, and therefore bring its octane rating up. Even if ethanol itself costs a bit more to make, depending on the year and the cost of oil and the cost of corn, than ethanol, the ability to use a lower grade of gasoline and boost its octane in this way often makes up for that economic difference. The thing, though, about ethanol is ethanol has 70% of the energy content per unit volume than gasoline. Okay? So you have to be careful. Because if you say, hey, I want to use 100% ethanol. Isn't that great? I'm using all green fuel. I buy a gallon of it. You're only going to go 70% the distance. It only has 70% of the energy. Your gas mileage will go down by 30% if you have 100% ethanol. At 10%, that isn't really quite true. It's not a high enough percentage to really notice the energy content because the ethanol burns more completely. Across the country, there's another phenomena where they're selling E85. E85, as you might imagine, is 85% ethanol. And you can go to a gas pump even here in Illinois in the heart of corn country and you could buy E85 if your car is set up to be able to run it. And it's cheaper. And I see people saying, oh look, that E85 fuel is cheaper, let me go buy it. Here you really notice the lack of energy. If I take 85% times the 0.70, and then of course the other 15% is gasoline, so we'll have that be 1, and I multiply that together, this is about 0.75, it's about 3 quarters. So if the price of gasoline is $3 per gallon, to get the same mileage, to get the same energy use, your E85 better cost 75% of that or $2.25 per gallon. If it doesn't, buy the gasoline. That's what you need to know about fuel types.